What's up guys? So as you know, when I find a fix for something on my PC that I think might help others, I like to share it. And recently I was on Facebook and there was a dude complaining that he can't get his VRAM to downclock. I think it was with an RX 580. And I looked at my VRAM, like, cause I've overclocked mine a little bit and I noticed that mine's not downclocking either. Like I know that it can downclock from previous GPUs I've had, but I just haven't really been paying attention to the subject. I just assumed, okay, when it's at idle, idle it'll do it. But mine wasn't doing it. Like the GPU core is downclocking, as you can see here in this picture, uh, zero megahertz, you know, zero voltage, and the power is at 30 watts. So it seemed all right, but I did notice that my clock speed was stuck at 2100. And no, it's not because of the overclock. It's literally just stuck. So I looked into it and I stumbled into a German thread that talks about monitor drivers and basically a a setting in the monitor that is called blanking time, which there's a whole explanation here. Uh, I'll link this in the comments below. You can just like download a translator app and translate it to English. And basically he explains it all. He gives you a formula. He tells you what tool to use. It's all self-explanatory, but I'm just going to give a rough breakdown of like how to, how to do it. Um, if you don't want to bother reading through all the theory behind it. So there is a formula at the bottom with a spreadsheet. You can copy the spreadsheet and try to put in your own values, uh, based on the tool. So there's, this tool is called custom resolution utility and the tool itself will have, you know, all your, it'll have an active profile. And this is from my monitor. It's a 34 inch, uh, 3440 by 4040 at 100 hertz. And basically, this is what I was getting at 100 hertz, no down clocking. And then if I go to, whoops, <laughs> um, then if I go to my 60 hertz um, setting, I had the same blank, there's a, there's a setting, there's a, there's a, variable called blanking time, which is kind of like it's tied to the latency or delay between the monitor and the GPU driver. If the blanking time is too short, it can't downclock. The VRAM just won't, won't clock down because there's no latency. There's not enough timing. And this mainly applies to low load situations. So it's not really going to affect your gaming, but it can affect your monitor stability if you're not running a high enough bandwidth cable. So I'll go over that at the end. But basically, if you're running DisplayPort, you know, HDMI 1.2, you should be fine. There's a cable bandwidth guide here. You want to be on DVI dual link 1.3 at least. Uh, maybe 1.2 is fine. It really depends on the resolution and the refresh rate because they'll ha you'll have different pixel clocks. So these are the max pixel clocks. And in the tool itself, which is linked down below, where you can find your high refresh rate uh, details. For example, if it's not here, like you can see mine's not here. It's got 60 hertz. Go to the bottom at extension blocks and click edit. And you might, you should be able to find it here. So I can see my three from 40 by 40 and 40 at 100 hertz. So if I take a look in there, you can see the pixel clock is actually up at 543 megahertz. So if I was running like a low bandwidth cable, this fix would like literally cause my driver or my monitor to reset because it wouldn't be stable. Um, so that's the downside, but he does go into that. He explains the downside as to what can happen. Uh, at worst, it can reset. And then when you open the tool again, there'll be another profile over here under active profiles, there'll be like an extra profile here that you don't need. Um, it'll just like create a new one. So it'll, it'll reset to defaults, I should say. So basically I tried it and I looked at the formula and I looked at my default, which under here was 41. It was a really low value, my, my blanking time. It wasn't high enough to get any VRAM down clocking. Even at 60 Hertz, um, which is still a lower pixel clock, like the pixel clock's only down at 326. Even at that, uh, this is what it was like. It was at 41, and you can see the pixel clock was 326, and it was only down clocking to 900 megahertz. So even at 60 hertz, I wasn't getting proper down clocking because the VRAM can actually, it has steppings where it can actually go much lower and save even more power for better results, basically. So when I looked at my 100 hertz value in here, it was also at 41, the same as my 60 hertz, and the pixel clock was at 533. So I, I reckon they do this for compatibility with different cables, because obviously you try to want, run 100 hertz on a cable that can support it. But if the blanking time is is too low, uh, too high, I should say, the pixel clock will actually go up. So see, it's 533. If I put in um, 200, just for example, it goes up to 590. And there's, you know, there's a limitation for cables. So that's what I reckon they do it for. Uh, that's what the guy explains as well. And it makes perfect sense. So it's to do with cable compatibility and refresh rates, uh, just a rough breakdown. So you want to be on a good cable to get, you know, the best results. Uh, you might have to limit yourself to how high you set the blanking time based on your cable bandwidth because it, it does increase the pixel clock.
So after explaining all that, I tried the formula that he has on the, his page, and I came up with about 61 from 41. But his own results, he only had to drop. His default was actually 65. It was actually pretty good already. And so 65, and he had the same um, actual 3 for 40 by 40 and 40 at 100 hertz monitor as me. Like, not the same panel, but the same, you know, res, res and refresh rate. So he only had to go from 65 to 70, and I think that's why it worked for him, because apparently around 70 is, is what you need, um, based on my own testing. So on my, you know, formula, I came up with about 61 as what I needed. So I tried 60 and 61 and 65, and none of them downclock properly. Uh, they all were stuck at 2100 megahertz. So I thought, okay, I'll just try what this dude did, and I'll just put it on, because it's the same, you know, refresh rate and resolution, I'll just copy his 70 value. And then I did notice other people replying on the thread with different refresh, higher refresh rates and different resolutions were having to put in much higher values to get the same downclocking. So, you know, they were like uh, 1440p was needing at 144 hertz needs like over 100 uh, time. But due to the um, the way the pixel clock is adjusted with the combination of of resolution and refresh rate, it didn't necessarily mean that they were at a higher pixel clock. Um, it just, it just, it's variable. So anyway, this tool will adjust all the values for you anyway, so you don't have to worry too much about everything else. It's just you're mainly adjusting the blanking time because that's what affects the downclocking. So now to show you what it looks like in practice. Uh, so if I go to this picture here, this first one was my stuck VRAM at 41 blanking time. The second one is my 60 hertz down clocking at 41 blanking time, but obviously 60 hertz, um, lower pixel clock overall, and or higher pixel clock, I, sh I should say, but you know, lower bandwidth overall. So I was getting some down clocking to 9, 10, and 20 watts on I at the desktop. So before I went from 31 watts to 20 watts, and you know, that's not that great. But then when I copied the dude, like when I copied 70, be likely because of my monitor variables and my GPU itself, because he's running a different GPU. Um, he was testing with a, where is it? He mentioned somewhere what GPU he was running. Um, does it state it here? No. <laughs> um, whatever GPU is running, but basically it, it, the power saving modes on the GPU can vary between models. I'm sure most people are aware of that. Uh, yeah, a 5, 5700 XT. I think the 6700 XT I'm on might have slightly better power saving modes or the memory itself. Because, you know, Micron, Hynix, Samsung all have different steppings for, for power saving. So I think the 6700 XT is on Samsung, uh, the, the model I have. But basically, when I adjusted and just used the same 70 uh, blanking time as him, this was my result at 100 hertz. So better than the 60 hertz result, if I can get it to go to page 3. This is my result. 14 megahertz idle and 5 watts. So I went from, basically, I went from 100 hertz at 31 with a stuck VRAM clock all the way down to 14 at 5 watts. And it's completely stable. I can watch YouTube. I can, you know, I can use the computer as normal. There's no weird behavior. There is a list of things people have reported from setting the blanking time. I think this is mostly to do with cables. Um, if you're running a low cable and you don't have enough bandwidth, that will cause either a fail or, you know, abnormal behavior. So you can see he's got a disadvantages thing. Uh, it'll re The monitor will reset itself and then you'll have like that extra profile and then you have to try a different value. And so this is where I would recommend if you're doing this, work your way up. Uh, try to use the formula. It might give you a rough thing. You know, put your blanking, your, your default blanking time in here and, and see if you can, what it gives you, like try 60, 61, or try just increasing it in increments of 10 because it's very quick. Uh, when you open the tool, It'll have your active profile, you know, find your, if it's not in this list, go to extension blocks, edit, find your high refresh rate profile, go to blanking and change it, you know, put it up to, for example, 100 or whatever it's on, put it up by 10 of whatever it's on. So if it's on 41, try 51, or you could try jumping to 61 if you're, if you're at the same, like similar refresh rate and, and hertz to me. But if you're on like a higher refresh rate, like not 100 hertz, if you're on 144 hertz, Oops, uh, it's not allowed for mine. But basically, if you're on a higher refresh rate, you might need to set a higher blanking time. It depends. And just go up in increments of 10 to 20 until you can narrow down what's stable and what works and what gives you some results. And so after you've inputted it, just as an example, 
if I was going to do it from my current one, just say 70 wasn't working and I tried 80, you put in 80, you click OK, and then you click OK again on the tool. So you completely close the tool, that saves it. And then to get it to take effect, uh, in the folder where the tool, you've unzipped the tool, you click double click restart 64, and that'll basically reset your driver. And you know, your screen will go black, it'll make a diddle in, like a, a driver, you know, new device uh, noise. And then your picture will come back with the new blanking time. And then you'll just be able to go straight into your driver and see if it's down clocking at idle. And then if it doesn't work, like if it's still stuck on the same clock, make sure you're at the desktop with everything closed. Um, if you're still not getting any down clocking behavior whatsoever, then just open the tool again and, you know, go back into the setting, increase it by another 10 and restart 64. Like it's that simple. Make sure you close the tool like by clicking OK to save those values. And that's the that's the rough guide on what you should do if you want to try to get uh, this kind of down clocking result. And yeah, you can see that it's definitely worth it, especially if you spend a lot of time browsing, uh, you know, browsing the internet. Like as you can see here, if if I wasn't recording, I'm recording with Relive now, so I'm stuck at 36 watts. But if I wasn't recording and I just had uh, Brave browser open, I will get really low VRAM speeds now, and and I get like you know 25 watts power saving. It's like the same as having a few light light um, light switches turned off, and you know fathers like me will also know that we get a bit we get a bit uh, overboard when it comes to leaving lights on in the house, which are about five to eight watts each. So you know any power savings good, and I just wanted to share that. I'll link everything down below, including the cable bandwidth uh, link, so you can take a look if you're not running a decent enough cable. You might be, uh, it might be fine on a single link depending on your refresh rate and your resolution. But basically trial and error and increasing that blanking time until you get some kind of beneficial improvement. And yeah, this tool is from all the way from by Toasty X, custom resolution utility is all the way back from uh, 2012, but it looks like it's been, it's been edited at 2021. So that's nice to see. He's been keeping it up to date. And this is on monitortest.com. But I was able to download the tool. Like you can see this, the download CRU.zip. I was able to download this and it's working fine uh, straight out of the forum without having to register. So that's really nice that they've just let it, you know, they've allowed people to just grab it uh, without having to make some, some forms will have to make you register. So anyway, um, thanks for watching guys. And I hope that helps you out, especially if you're someone that's been hunting for this particular issue. Uh, like the dude that I saw on Facebook, I was able to link him this and hopefully he got it sorted. Um, but the explanation still helps like the verbal explanation on top of, you know, you can just read through it anyway if you've got more time on your hands. So, yeah, thanks for watching. And if this helps you, please like and subscribe. See ya.